Uh, we've got Aaron Wirtz uh, currently working with still you're still yeah, so with Jolly still with the Jolly Scholar. Um, in that's in University yeah, University, University Circle. Circle Case Western Reserve. Yeah, Case Western Reserve. Um, Aaron contacted us. I don't know, maybe a month, two months ago, something like that. Um, and he's going to be working on a project and has been working on a project, uh, Planted Flag Brewing. Um, company and he just wanted to give a little bit of talk. He also brought in some beer. So at some point I think during the, the talk we'll, we'll likely divvy up uh, some of the beer between the tables and um, try some of the, the stuff that he brought for us. So without further ado, uh, Aaron. Thanks, Neil. I want to start off and apologize for not having been to one of these meetings before. Um, having been back in Ohio for since 2014, I, I moved to Medina, so we had a homebrew club there at the Brim, and uh, I always heard about stop meetings, and this is really, really awesome to finally be at one of these. Um, I never went close enough, but I have to say, your turnout is a lot better than our meetings. I was an officer with our club, and... Uh, I just started to run out of time to, to, to be able to make all the meetings with uh, work and then this project that I've been working on for about the last uh, year or so. Um, but I'm here today to, uh, to talk a little bit about the crazy idea of starting a brewery. Um, I know some, we've had members in this club specifically, open breweries. I remember Jamil Zanishev say the, the worst thing you can do is take a hobby that you love and turn it into a job that you hate. And I think I'm paraphrasing that a little bit, but you know, he'll always joke that, that it, this hobby's pretty awesome, but then you get all the headaches that come with running a business. Um, and, and I think I'm crazy enough to take on some of those headaches. Um, so I'm gonna talk today a little bit about um, my venture, Planted Flag Brewing, and, and we're gonna be opening in uh, Medina, hopefully this year. So, uh, first of all, our mission is to craft food and beer planted in family sustainability and our local community. Um, that's really a part of what Planted Flag means, so that I go to my community, I was in the military, my wife was in the military, both in the Air Force, and you move around from place to place, and you meet new people, but what you do every time you move is you plant your flag, you tell your story, you share your who you are with your community. It was an Air Force community for us at a new base, and to move back to Ohio after being gone for almost 20 years in the military, it was my chance to come back to Ohio, and this is our opportunity for my family to plant our flag. So that's kind of what the business is about. But it's a, not just about me, it's about our local community. So when I say I'm planting my flag, this is Aaron. We could say that Kara's planting her flag. Or we can have Andrew's planting his flag. And it, it's, that's the story I want to convey with this brewery, is it's a community brewery just as much as everyone else, but this one's a little special. One of the things that I felt most passionate about is I wanted to share my family's story with the names of the beers. So all the beer names with planted flag are going to be named after family members to start off with. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to be community members that are going to be names, you know, beer named after them as well. So that's really what we wanted to be ingrained in the community, not just another brewery that starts up. Yes, we maybe use the same malt that some other person does or the same hops. And, and I know that you're all, you know, we wanted to kind of differentiate ourselves that way is how we were different. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about starting a brewery. Some of it's just basic stuff that kind of goes over, you know, um, typical startup. Um, some of it's a little specific to mine. But this is me. I'm standing in the lot on 3594 Pearl Road in Medina Township. And that is an acre and a half that used to be an old farmstead. Um, and I, we bought that property back in December. So that spot where I'm standing is probably going to be the parking lot. And then that pile of rocks that somebody dumped on my property, that's going to be where the brewery is. And then just passing through those woods is the west branch of the Rocky River. 
So we got a really cool location. I'm surrounded on two sides by Medina County Parks and then another 66 acres of just vacant land. So, but still on a pretty high traffic areas face. So what we're gonna talk, what I'm gonna talk about today is the what, who Planted Flag is. I told you a little bit about that, why I got into this crazy idea of opening my own brewery, and a little bit of how. Um, these are some things that, you know, I pulled from other sources, but it's a lot of stuff that I've been through. It's not all inclusive in the timelines, you know, those can all drag on as, as a lot of, uh, as Kara could probably attest to. So and then I'll open up for questions. And then I do have some samples of beer. I've been home brewing nonstop, even after I started working at the Jolly Scholar about, it'll be three years in August. Um, so I've been a home brewer for almost 10 years and I didn't stop. I kept on brewing at home because I just wanted to tinker and play. And that's who I am really as a brewer, just a person that wants to perfect his craft like many of you are. So what we're going to do, well I hope to open a 10 barrel brewery. Um, which is veteran and family owned, and we're focused on incorporating the best ingredients from Ohio and around the world. And when I say that, um, I've been using West Branch malts in Brunswick, and I've been using house malts uh, here on Carnegie Road in, in Cleveland for probably the past two years um, at the Jolly Scholar. But my hope is to, for the most part, all my base malts Ohio. Um, if I can get a 100% Ohio malt beer, well, you're going to probably be tasting all four of these samples 100% Ohio malt. Um, and then I'm looking to source hops from a couple of local hop farmers I know in the area and also from Michigan and then, you know, everyone loves Citra, everyone loves Galaxy, so we'll try to find those hops and see if we can squeeze them in. Um, but my goal is I'm going to be focused on um, hoppy farmhouse and lager. Those are my three favorite kind of categories of beers. I'll do other things, but our focus is, is uh, really planted in, in those, and I think it fits. When I moved to Medina, I had well water that was really, really bad. A lot of, lots of, lots of temporary hardness. And guess what I did? I boiled the crap out of it. And I took that water and it softened it up and that water was pretty damn good for Saison. And uh, that water profile I kind of kept, and that's quite a bit of what my farmhouse beers are based on, is that original water that I pulled from my well, and then I boiled and was able to use. So um, just kind of fell in love with that artisanal aspect or the ingredient aspect of farmhouse hills, and that's why I, I think that's where this brewery is gonna focus on, and, and that's where my focus is. So why would someone open a brewery? Well, they like beer, right? I hope so. Well, yeah, that's it. The love of craft beer. Um, go ahead. If you go on beer trips, you can write it off on taxes. <laughs> um, my beer journey was when I was in the military. I was, I was stationed at Altus Air Force Base in Oklahoma. And if you're familiar with Oklahoma, there's this OK Plus that you might see on some bottles. And it, it, yeah, that means that that beer has to be in a cooler. And uh, it, they don't have much craft beer out there. And what I got to select was mostly like the national brands that you could find. Sierra Nevada, Samuel Adams, nothing wrong with those, those beers. But I really didn't get to get the offerings that everyone else did. And uh, I went to the Michigan Summer Beer Fest um, about 10 years ago, and that was it. I, I was like, oh my gosh. My brother lived in Michigan at the time. It, it wasn't, a, Ohio didn't even have a, a craft brewers festival. At the, so you can't say that, you know, Michigan beer is not necessarily better than Ohio, but it was my first experience and I, I fell in love. So another thing, being in the military for 20 years and having a boss and never going to get to the top, and then working as a teacher and then working as a brewer, you kind of get to the point where I'm a pretty smart person, at least I think I am. But you want to be able to call the shots, you want to be able to make those choices that are yours. And uh, sometimes that takes, you know, you're taking on a lot of risk and, and that was something that um, I approached my wife when I was ready to 
retired from the military, and I said, I wanted to open a brewery. And she says, no, you're not, you're not gonna do that. You're not ready. Um, but she, you know, after getting experience as a professional brewer and really showing, I, I can do it, that's when, you know, I thought I was ready to be my own boss. So I, I proved that some people would actually buy my beer. So that was good, that was a good feeling. I mean, when someone gives you good feedback on a homebrew, same thing, same thing at a, at a, at a bar. Um, when people enjoy your beer, it's a great feeling. And then I also wanted to provide for my family. Having been in the military, you make a lot of sacrifices. The pay is, it was pretty good. It is, it's afforded me to have this opportunity, but I took some passion projects. I was a high school teacher. I taught at Brunswick High School. I taught chemistry and physics, and then I taught chemistry at Holy Name High School for a little over a year. And, uh, you know, chasing things that I, were exciting to me or I wanted to share my knowledge. And, uh, but those things didn't pay quite well. Being a, being a head brewer, it's a great job, but it doesn't pay well. So um, that portion of it is I wanted to be able to have the opportunity to financially provide for my family. Another reason why I chose to open a brewery, it's in my blood. My great-great-grandfather, August Erlein, moved to um, the United States from Germany in uh, 1884. He worked as a bookkeeper at Ottman Brewing Company, which is the current location of Forest City Brewing Company. So after he left Ottman, Ottman became Phoenix Brewing Company. Um, he left with a partner, Lesius, and they bought a brewery. Um, his brewery is located, was located on um, where the Orange Avenue post office is in downtown Cleveland. You can see it as you're going past uh, Progressive Field on the right-hand side by the East 9th and Orange Avenue exits. And that location was where um, the, one of the largest breweries in Ohio actually was, which was um, Diebold Brewing Company. And at their height, before Prohibition, they produced 50,000 barrels of beer. My great-great-great-grandfather -grand, great sold um, to Diebold in um, the late 18 or like mid 1890s, and uh, he was producing about 4,000 barrels before he sold his brewery. Um, opened a saloon. After he sold the saloon, he opened a bottling company on Columbus Road. And my great grandmother used to run. After she graduated um, grade school, she was a stay-at-home. Her, her, her mother had passed away. And uh, my, my great-great-grandmother passed away, and she would run sandwiches across West 25th down to Columbus to bring him his food uh, when he worked at the bottling company. So this is really this rich story that, that I only discovered after I had been brewing for, for about nine years. This was about, it was about December of last year that I found out this, this kind of stumbled upon this story. So it's really interesting to find out that I have Cleveland Brewing blood in me. And it, it's cool to find out after you're a Cleveland Brewer. So it's, it's really exciting. So that's my passion that I bring every day is this discovery that, that this is not just something that I fell into. This is something that perhaps I was, you know, born to do. A couple of cool names for your beers. Yeah. So uh, German style Pilsner, August. Or it could be a fast beer. We'll see. So how? Okay, this is the tough part. Bear with me. I'm going to go through some of these kind of fast. We can open it up to questions specifically to me, but this is kind of like, how the heck do you open a brewery? Well, yeah, you just, there's no set plan. Um, obviously, there's a ton of resources out there with the Ohio Craft Brewers Association, the Brewers Association. You can Google how to open a brewery probably too. But there's no set plan. Each of us comes from a you know, different background. I'm a brewer, but you have people that come in with their, they're bringing in money. They might have a marketing and advertising background. So there's not necessarily a set plan. All this stuff I'm gonna go over, these are just general guidelines. Please don't take it as gospel. I'm still learning. I think all of us are. We're only as good as our last beer that we brewed. Um, be prepared for the unexpected. I've learned so much and thought I knew something only to find out I was a complete fool. So make sure that you're watching out. Know that you can't know everything as well. I'm a big type A type person, so I think I can learn everything and know everything. That means ask for help, because you're not an expert on everything. 
I've learned so much from talking to the craft brewers around Cleveland. Um, Vaughn Stewart at Bookhouse, Sean Yasaki, Noble Beast, um, Ralph at Brick and Barrel. I mean, it just there's so many great resources out there, pro brewers that just want to kind of share their insights and, and help you along the way. So, so you know, that was really awesome to have those those great you know folks out there to help me. So I'm going to kind of go over a timeline. I started this probably. A, I would say last year around this time, I came up, I, I finally had decided that this was a good idea and I had talked to all those folks ahead of time and so I'm about hopefully six months from opening. Could be more, I'm not going to, you know, say that I have, well, I understand I have to open, but I'm about six months from opening. So about a year ago today, I sat down, my wife and I were like, we're going to do this, sat down with an architect, kind of finalized the, the business plan, and I went forward with, with moving along. So this is gonna be, I didn't know how small this text was, but writing the business plan, yeah. That is the thing that's gonna that took me the longest of this whole venture so far. It took me about six months, and it's not just writing a plan, this is what we're gonna be about, it was all the financial stuff. I, I'm not, I, I didn't have an MBA, I, I'm a civil engineer and a master's in education, and I'm smart enough to know money um, that I saved enough that I could hopefully start this project, but I learned a whole lot about uh, financing that I didn't know. So with that, writing your business plan, investing, or how are you gonna finance your project? Are you gonna get investors? Are you gonna get angel investors? Are you gonna bring partners along? Are you gonna get a loan? This project was SPA loan and 100% self finance. So my wife and I, while we were in the military, we saved a lot of money. I lived on pretty much the pay that I did from the time I was like a lieutenant until I got married and then when we got married we lived on the pay from a captain all the way till the time I retired. So we really didn't change our standard of living and put a lot of money away for a rainy day and we thought that rainy day would be at age 65 but we were able to use that money to invest in our business. So. What you're gonna have to do to gather and write a business plan is your financial statements. You gotta figure out how much money you have. You gotta be able to obtain your quotes. You gotta be able to project how much you're gonna sell. You gotta figure out what equipment you wanna have and what equipment you can afford. Um, a one barrel brewery may work out. It, the equipment's a lot less, the financing's a lot less, the payout may not be as much, but you can still be a, a, a brewery. Um, and then it came down to sizing the project, peripherals. Do I want to have equipment to expand? How big am I going to be? I had grandiose plans that I was going to be a 3,000 barrel brewery right off the bat. <laughs> that I would at least size it to that. So guess what? Mm, that didn't happen. Kept on scaling back, scaling back, scaling back. So scale your project. Uh, we'll probably make about 2,000 barrels max w without expansion. And that's, that's good. If I sell half of that in the tap room, oh my goodness, we will be a successful brewery. I hope that. Um, looking at your process piping. So you're sizing all your equipment, sizing your glycol header, sizing all the piping that's going to go there. That takes time. That takes research. I ask me about it, I can tell you all about George Fisher products. Um, knowing your building codes, knowing if your township, where you want to go, are they going to want a brewery? I went to um, Brunswick Hills, Brunswick, Medina, Medina Township, I went to all their council meetings and kind of talked with folks and said, are, are you willing to have a brewery open in your, in your town? If they're not willing, then you try to force it upon them, it's not going to be a very good outcome. And then um, when we were really serious, after I'd written my business plan, we filed for, for with the state to actually incorporate um, our business. So we're Planted Flag Brewing Incorporated. Um, and uh, one thing I'd also recommend, if you're interested in your name, you like your name, I had a name in mind before Planted Flag. It wasn't as good as Planted Flag. But it was taken. Someone trademarked it. So if you're interested, all you have to do is show use of that trademark, and you have a, probably about, I got another six months before I have to show that proof, 
If not, you could always contract brew with someone and put a tag on it, and there's your proof. <clears throat> We're about still getting closer to where I'm at now, but 12 to 8 months out, select an architect. If you're going to build, you can maybe find a construction firm as well that can do both. But um, I was fortunate. I'm going with um, Sixmo Architects and Engineers. They've done um, Bookhouse. They've done Noble Beast. Um, they've done um, also done Masthead. So they were the architects behind those three breweries. Um, and then you want to try to select your location. I looked at other spaces. I looked at a Cub Cadet dealership that I was hoping to turn into a brewery. Um, but it just didn't fit my feel if I wanted you to do farmhouse beers and you're sitting in a Cub Cadet dealership drinking it, did it really feel like you were at a farmhouse? So, um, we selected a green space, so my, my space has no utilities. So I didn't think about that before we decided to purchase the property or knew how much the connection fees for a lot of these utilities were. Wow, yeah, I was surprised. So, if you already got utilities, it's a good thing. Three-phase power, 400 amps, sewer connection, water line, natural gas. You're not going to be an all-electric brewery. If, you are, if you're a one-barrel system or smaller, some of those Blickman units, you can you know, use electricity. But natural gas is normally what's firing either a direct fire or a, a steam boiler for, for a, a brew house. Um, planning, proposals, plans, and zoning. So I, I got our zoning approved for Planted Flag in November, and then we purchased the property in December. So I wanted to make sure they would actually let me put a brewery in before I bought an acre and a half in Medina Township. So fortunately, they were on board, and we showed our proposed plans and what we wanted to do, and uh, the township signed off on them. Um, Local building requirements, sidewalks, turn lanes. I got familiar with the code. Being a former civil engineer, this was, yeah, it's stuff that I avoided. That's why I became a pilot in the Air Force, not to, to chase this stuff. But, um, and then securing financing. I'm still securing financing. Our project ended up going up, uh, turned out to be more than we had anticipated. So we got initial financing for what we thought we could build this project for. And then lo and behold, the construction, the groundwork, all the site work, all the uh, moving of uh, dirt and water runoff for rain, it ended up driving up the costs a little bit. So we're back to resecuring our financing. We had to bring a little bit more capital, but they're, we're going to hopefully close here on our loan in the next couple of uh, weeks. Um, and then we went SBA. So SBA is a government program for small businesses. So it's a government program, so it takes extra time. At eight to six months remaining from opening, um, selecting your equipment suppliers if you haven't done it any uh, before. I'm pretty much settled unless the bank says no, that's, you can't afford that. Um, I'm settled on craft work out of Detroit, Michigan. So they made the brew house for uh, Masthead and if you've been to Blue Heron in uh, Montville Township, just south of Medina, they have a craft work uh, brew house as well. I'm going to have one pretty much similar to what Mike Piazza has down there. Um, finalize architect and engineering plans. We kept on kind of scoping down this project to get it in budget, but we're going to have about 3,000 square foot brewery, 60 seats in the tap room, and then we're going to have a patio with another 40 seats outside. So we'll have about 100 seats total. I'm not going to put the patio in in the middle of fall or winter. Um, so we'll wait till the spring season before we install that. Um, and then I'm this close to bidding. Once our financing looks like it's in hand, we have a, a, a bid that I'm willing to accept for construction. And uh, with construction, price is one thing, but someone who's actually put together a brewery before is important. Um, so the person or the the group that we've picked um, has done several breweries in, in uh, the area as well. So some of the same breweries I mentioned already too. So having that good general contractor who knows what they're doing with breweries because it's not quite the same. I'm going to be there. I've already built, when I, when I uh, started at um, the Jolly Scholar, 
it was just a pit in the basement of the of the student center. So I got to see all the construction and see the pluses and minuses of not of, of working with a uh, con contractor that has never done a brewery before. And so uh, I got to learn from that experience. Um, getting close as well. So once we get that financing in hand, we can put money down and uh, purchase our tanks as well. It does take about four to six months. So hopefully I get my tanks I get my brew house about two months before we're ready to open and we'll tie everything in and get it started. Um, and then all the paperwork, TTB, zoning permits, um, liquor license, food permit, kitchen, health department, all that fun stuff we're gonna start to look at and, and start working towards. Um, so, and then hopefully breaking ground within the next four to six weeks. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> So six months, not quite there yet, but pretty close. So I'm gonna purchase all my stuff, all the parts that go to a, in a brewery. It, it, all the stuff we accumulate as home brewers, oh my gosh, it, 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 it adds up. And then think of all that stuff on a professional level and you gotta have all those odds and ends too to make things, you know, just to make beer. It's a lot. Um, chiller, boiler, keg cleaner, refrigerator. We're gonna do. We're gonna have a draft cooler. Um, so it's all those things that you wouldn't think of. I, I have a list. I itemized everything. I went down to the how many tri clamp, how many tri clamps I needed for this brewery because it, it just if the bank wanted to know it, I was gonna give it to them. And then order kegs. Hey, sometimes it takes some time if you're ordering new kegs, especially if you get them in boss. Um, I might lease. We'll see. Just depends on what is left in money at the end of the day. Um, finishing up the tap room, furnishings, glassware, and then starting social media and marketing. So this is, you know, we, we want to do a Kickstarter. We want our folks that are interested in our brewery to become a part of it. And so we're going to start probably within the next uh, two months a social media campaign. We're going to have a Kickstarter. Um, swag, names on stuff like tanks and chairs and beers see so hopefully uh, have something that people want um, and, and then you know try to gen up a little bit of capital to help us get to the finish line because we're gonna have unexpected costs that come up um, once I get all the brewery equipment installed well I'm gonna be doing the glycol myself I'm gonna be putting all the tanks in I did all that at, at Jolly Scholar so it's not anything that I, I'm not familiar with and, and I'm pretty handy but uh, I can't do it by myself, so I'll be calling some friends for help. If anyone's interested in getting involved, hey, I, I got beer to pay you in for now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, getting down to the finish line. So this is hopefully like September or August, September. We're getting close. Hopefully I'm there. Finishing up that process piping, months of inspections, those punch list items, I don't know if you ever got to see Bookhouse when they shared like their list of how many items they had left. We're gonna have a ton. Gonna have to train staff, gonna have to train, you know, kitchen, bar, brewery staff, and then updating drawings, fixing every fire that's, you know, started and putting it out, and then getting those final inspections, getting the permit to brew. Uh, TTB is pretty awesome. Normally, if everything checks out, they'll say, go ahead, bro. And then it takes a couple weeks before the paperwork's filed, but you can at least get a head start on having some product out um, before, you know, before you open it. Um, started at six months now. So, yeah, I'm, I, like, literally now I'm going to... Six no, months? The state is right now at six months. So six months for approval? The state is now your, your backup, not the TTB. Right. So, we'll, we'll see. I, I'll... I'll I'm submitting my paperwork is very, very soon, so we'll probably be down to the wire before everything gets done. Worst case, I just go collab brew everywhere else and we got beer to sell. But that's it. I mean, and kind of breaking down how that order, what it does, there's a whole lot more details. And it's like every night I come home from work and I go back to work. So it, it whether it's, or, you know, taking a lunch break and I'm on the phone with the architect or I'm on the phone with the, someone else trying to put out something to make this thing happen. But um, 
Any questions, guys? I, I open it up. First of all, I love your name. That name alone is going to bring me into your brewery. Thank you Where very much. exactly is your brewery located? I'm seeing that in the building. 3594 Pearl Road is, if you draw a dot from Brunswick and Medina yep. city centers, it's right in the middle on Pearl Road. So that's what I kind of figured. So, so where's that at? Is that by like Walmart and all that stuff? So if you're, if, you guys know where, where Loggerheads is off of Hamilton and the and Abbeville Road. Yep. Hamilton, I'm between Hamilton Road and Fen Road. So if you're going down south on Pearl Road, or anyone, like 71, 71 directions might be the easiest to do. But if you go down 71 south, the first exit in Medina is the Route 3 exit. You get off at the Route 3 exit, you make a, you go towards town, the very first right at the stoplight is Hamilton Road. If you take Hamilton Road all the way to Pearl and go south, I'm right between two billboards south of Vell's Party Center on the right-hand side, the west-hand side of the road. So you cross over the west branch of the Rocky River and then the, the land is right there. So. Um, Go past Fen Road towards uh, Pat O'Brien and start to get to actual biz other businesses. Tractor Supply is probably my closest biz business, and then, and then Dyna Glass as well. But, Are you going to be serving food? In yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to have a, a, a li not a limited kitchen. I didn't want to spend too much on the kitchen side, so we're going to have deli style sandwiches, soups, salads, and we're sourcing all of our. It, all of our meats are going to come from Ohio, and then we'll source produce as we can from, you know, seasonal uh, produce from uh, local farmers in the area. So we'll have a full menu. Um, figured what better way a farmhand would have beer maybe and a sandwich in his hand. So, um, but right, as of right now, hot and cold sandwiches, soup, salads, and then as as is. If we do choose to expand, we'll, we'll probably work, look at the kitchen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. You're going to apply for the loan. Typically, it's 10 to 20 percent down for for an SBA loan. You're going to have to put capital down, and um, what it, it's just giving you the opportunity. But what they're going to do is you put that money down. They also have to show that. Your uh, your debt to sales is gonna gonna equal out. So like you take a traditional mortgage, you're gonna have to have enough income, prove enough income to justify the debt that you take. So in this case, I think it's like 1.2. You have to have 1.2 times or 1.25 times um, the income to your annual. Premium or your annual payments for for the loan. Right. So we're, we're I mean like I already have I have income coming in, uh, you know from retirement. But but my salary I'm going to pay myself a salary. I'm going to pay my wife a salary because she's going to be you know working at the brewery as well. Um, and then from there any other income we have in revenue goes towards that calculation. So. What business type did you choose? Yeah. We chose um, a C Corp, and the okay. reason we had to choose a C Corp was I, I did a rollover for business startup. So what I did is I, my 401k actually is the primary owner of this business. I had capital I brought, my wife and I had capital we brought, but we took our 401k, and our 401k is the primary shareholder of, of our stock. So it, it owns about 95% no, actually about 93% of the shares of the stock, and it's it's a tax law called ERISA, so I'm not a tax attorney, but it was an opportunity to turn an investment in the stock market into an investment in, into our company. So you have to pay, so when you roll that over into that, you have to No, you don't, but you gotta be careful. Um, I ran into some headaches where a portion of it got taxed when it shouldn't have. Was somebody taxed it? That the IRS did, and I'm getting it back, but um, but it, it was because it's it's the because it's an investment vehicle, and it's a 401k. I've had to establish a 401k plan for the company, so all my employees are going to have opportunity to invest in a 401k plan. Um, I as a 
I had to become I had to become a C corp, and I have to invest in my my company's 401k plan along with my wife. So it, it was an opportunity to 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 use tax law to in, invest in my business versus investing in the stock market. Um, real quick one, if you get an opportunity to have the beers, I, ha I brought um, four beers today. Um, I have a single hop um, pale ale with Mackinac hops. So this one's a proprietary hop um, from Michigan. Um, I brought a farmhouse ale, just a traditional Saison. Um, and then I brought a dry hot um, Saison, and then I brought a Munich Hellas as well. So all of these are kind of, they're, they're test batches to try to figure some things out. Some of Mackinac was a new hop I had never used before. Um, the dry hop Saison has a Michigan proprietary in it called Copper. Um, so, and all of these have 100% um, malt from Ohio. So, um, so the Hellas is pretty much all West Branch malts, and then the Saisons are a blend of, of uh, base malts and then adjuncts from uh, house malts. So any other questions, guys? I appreciate you know the opportunity to come out here and, and be, be a part of a snob meeting and get to talk here, too, with you.